Good afternoon, Sparks fans. Welcome back to my channel, where we haven't uploaded in ages, but with the new Pokemon games coming out and I me needing a creative outlet just to get bullied online, I thought, what better time than to announce my return than the new BDSOU metagame, where I am going to look into, in depth, you know, a few of these Pokemon. What makes them so great? How do we look at a top 20? How do we look at, you know, teams? How do we look at very simplistic concepts that have outdated us since the dawn of time? Why is the king of OU this bog steel type that has never really had any prevalence? It's a Pokemon that it's mega um, shone. It was very popular on Draft League, but we never really saw what it can do. Even going back into the original Gen 4 metagame, it was a threat. But we haven't seen it like this. And I think the key addition of this metagame that makes it all so insanely powerful is the Laddie Suspect test. One of its biggest counters got banned originally, which is Blaziken. And then we have seen such an influx of poke people, you know, using that brain dead choice specs Latios, where we're exchanging a lot of power for a lack of momentum. Scissor was one of the only few bug types that does get U turn. And also, in combination of that, it does get Roost. Now, when we look at the Gen 4 metagame, we can really see where Sizzle begins to shine based off the in-game itself. You know, even Flint, who is a Fire-type Elite 4 member, can't even fill up a roster. There's no real Fire-types. And especially as well with the removal of Hidden Power Fire, which was something that used to catch stray, you know... Poke sizzles previously in the past, we are now looking into a metagame where the predictability of OU is giving us a new wave of life. The reduction of Pokemon that get knockoff as the BDS um, OU uh, met, you know, Mew tutors have, you know, been removed. Also, as well, it's important to note the last time that Gen 4, we did have the introduction of Heart Gold, Silver, Silver, um, Move tutors, which also then expanded a lot of Pokemon's. A move pools. So when we look at Sizzle, there's nothing really too niche about it, but there is something that does make it arguably the king of OU at the moment, which has been mainly the focal point of the Laddie Suspect test. Latios was one of the few Pokemon running around to begin with that was a map absolute nightmare. You know, Specs Draco is very, very tough for a lot of Pokemon to switch into, and Sizzle does it really well. And the first set I want to go over, which is a really common set, which is that Spadef Sizzle with U-Turn, Bullet Punch, Sword Stance, and Roost. And I'm only going to go over the moves once and what they do, just because I think otherwise it's going to become a very long and repetitive, boring video. So U-Turn is a base 70 bug stab move, which allows Sizzle to attack and then pivot out. So what you common see, commonly see in this metagame is Latios comes in, tries to click Choice Specs Draco, does about 30%. Sizzle comes in, U-Turns, Whatever it goes, it wants to go into, whether that's Infernape or another Pokemon with a fire coverage, when we start thinking of a defensive dragon such as like Salamence or Garchomp or um, even things, you know, like Gliscor, which may not necessarily be a check but could be a lure, or like SDEQ for Sizzle. Uh, we can then go out into one of our own powerful uh, Pokemon with that very simple momentum. Then we have Bullet Punch. Bullet Punch is its main steel stab. What happens is this base 40 move with the ability of Technician makes it a base 60 move, plus stab, which is 1.5, makes it a base roughly, I think it's five base 90 move from memory, where, you know, when we're looking at these fast Pokemon that are in this archetype now, they're a lot frailer than what they are in when you start looking at Sword and Shield. You know, you're looking at Gengar, Alakazam. These Pokemon are frail. These Pokemon are glass, um, you know, cannon. So... What then we need to look at is what's next. Sword Stance is personally my favorite move on Sizzle. Um, SD Sizzle is a very popular thing because it allows us to start setting up. So Sword Stance allows a Sizzle to go to plus two. And from that plus two, we can then start really putting a lot of pressure on those frail walls. Um, you know, particularly Gengar and Alakazam. Gengar we do have to be a little bit careful of because of a stray Will-O-Wisp. Um, but that's what is, you know, makes this Pokemon so insane, is how can you quickly, t you know, change momentum. Then we have Roost on it. Oh, Roost is a flying type move that heals his health by 50%. So the other issue you've got as well with, like, Laddies, is it comes in, does Dracos, does about 30%. If Rocks are up, because then it takes 12.5% from Rocks, does it about 42 You can just Roost. 
if you predict like Inferno to come in and you have like a defensive wall into Inferno, like most commonly like a Gliscor or a Chomp, um, th that's where, you know, this Pokemon becomes very, very, uh, you know, simplistic. Okay, sweet. You click U-turn or Roost. And then when the game's about to win, you want to start clicking Sword Stance BP. And then we have seen Sizzle Wars. Um, now the next mon on the next sort of Sizzle set is the more common Defog. Now Defog is a move which clears terrain and hazards on both sides. Now there is no terrain in Gen 4, it's just showdown being really helpful. It's a bit like when your mum tells you to pack a sweater. It's not mum, we live in Australia, it's like 50 degrees. The only thing I should be packing is SPF 500 sunscreen because I will probably die of melanoma. With Defog it allows us to get rid of rocks, spikes, so as well that laddie switch in that, you know, is a Pokemon that was talked about getting banned. We're now exchanging a Draco potentially for hazards. And then once we've gone through that exchange, that war of attrition. It's really like World War II, isn't it? You know, what, who has the more resources? Next up, we have a Life Orb Sizzle with U-Turn, Bullet Punch, SD, and Quick Attack. Now, Quick Attack is a base 40 normal move, which usually goes first. It is, a, you know, base 60. Now, the main reason this... Pokemon wants to run quick attack is plus two SD after a couple of rounds of rocks, you're gonna start getting Infernape. Now Infernape in my opinion is one of the better checks to Sizzle, because if Sizzle clicks U-turn and you go into your Infernape, you can U-turn back out so you can get regain momentum. The issue you have with Sizzle is that there's no real momentum that you're going to um, gain back from it. Now the last set is a choice band Sizzle. Um, Aerial Ace is something that comes on a few uh, different Pokemon, so you know, 60 b bumped up to 90 with that technician ability. Aerial Ace is mainly for like Breloom or Infernape. Now, when you start thinking about those good checks, you know, you then begin to lure. You know, lures are something that, you know, attracts a bigger fish. You know, this little bug is, you know, just like me. I'm out on the water with my big rod in my Minecraft and I'm trying to lure in a bigger fish. You know, Scissor is coming on a laddie, laddie's like, oh, I need to go out. <laughs> Time for me to head out with my minus two special attack and go into my Infernape and whack. Sizzle has now got an Aerial Ace KO. So when we start looking at this Pokemon, we really need to start thinking, you know, what does this Pokemon do well and why, again, does it allow us such momentum? And I really think Sizzle will be arguably the king of OU for a very, very long time. It's the main Pokemon that enables such momentum so easily, so simplistically, until we begin to see a change up in the way that we see the uh, more breaking and dominant threats. You know, things like Infernape, for example, Flare Blitz wears it down recoil wells. We aren't seeing that many overheat um, Infernapes. Heat Train as well is another common switch into Scizor, but we U-turn out and we go into, you know, a Garchomp. So when we see Scizor on a team, we're thinking, what, you know, what are we building with Scizor? How do I look into some basic simplistic cores and pairs that I will quickly go over with you just so you have an idea. Um, I did want to show you that these are all my teams and a lot of the time Sizzle wants to come in with a very simple idea of a 3-mon core. Now, Fairy Dragon Steel is a 3-mon draft league core that has been popular since, I don't know, Zazu has been good at the game. It's something that's been popping off for a long time. Now, when we start thinking about these Fairy Dragon Steel cores, we are a lot more narrow in what's available in this Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl metagame. You know, when we're looking at Sword and Shield, we're having so many options, and, you know, sometimes we can have that analysis paralysis. So let's say, for example, we want to start with our Scizor. Now, what I want to do is, when I'm looking at Scizor, I don't want to necessarily um, start thinking too much about what the role is. So for me, a lot of the times, I'm looking at U-Turn, Bullet Punch, just to start off with. Now, the next thing I want to look at is, what are our available dragons to pair it with? So we sort of have, you know, these dragons here. So we have Dragonite, Garchomp, Latias, Latios, Altaria, Flygon, Kingdra, Salamence, right? These are our eight dragons. I want to pick one. Um, Garchomp, for example, is when you start and look at more of those heat trains. You know, this powerful earthquake that it gets, combine it with Ruskin as well. You can also lure in other sizzles with like Fire Blast. Um, also has Stealth Rock. So, you know, we're starting to see that these really good, powerful options. Also this base 102 speed stat. Uh, Ruskin's really nice because if this sizzle, you know, predicts like a fire, is like a fire move from an inferno, like a flare blitz, and you go into guard jump, you can start racking up a lot of damage. And then when we start looking at our fairies, the fairy types are very limited again. So again, we're only looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mr. Mime and Mawile are probably, and Wigglytuff are probably the three that we don't want to look at. Granville has a little bit of a niche with Intimidate. 
Gardevoir as well with that Trace, Wish, uh, Togekiss, you know, Roost, Thunder Wave. Um, allows a bit more defensive momentum. And then Clefable, uh, we're looking at more Magic Guard or Unaware to really boost our, um, our, our ways to stop setup spam. And as Maril as well can be a very, very damaging, like, 3 in 1 core. So when we look at, you know, let's say, for example, we want to look at Azumarill. So we look at Sizzle, we would go U-turn, Bullet Punch. Now, if we're going to look at a core like this, we're probably looking at more of a defensive, you, you know, U-turn, Roost, Sizzle. You know. Garchomp's probably looking at more like Sword Stance, Fire Blast, Earthquake, Dragon Claw, uh, Stealth Rock. And then Azumarill, for example, might be a uh, huge power, because that's what we want to do. The huge power, Choice Band, Player Off, Aqua Jet. That doesn't get Knock Off this gen, it gets Waterfall, and I think it gets Ice Punch. No, it's not Ice Punch. They run. Some of them run Focus Punch, but there is, you know, Super Power as well as another nice move. So when we start looking at this 3 on core, you can see that like this is a very, very offensive 3 on core. Now, the other Pokemon that does seem to go really well with Scizor is another Pokemon that allows us to get momentum, which is Rotom Wash. Now, Rotom Wash and Mega Scizor used to be popular in Auras OU um, because they do allow some nice momentum. So, you know, we might look at, you know, Leftovers, for example, or we might look at Choice Scarf. And then we want to compare that with, you know, looking again at, you know, Trick. So... That's why Sizzle, to me, will be the king of OU for a very, very, very long time. It's a Pokemon that will enable us the way forward where we start looking into how do we play with it. So I thought what I might do is I might just grab a game or two with some of my favorite Sizzle teams. Um, so let me have a quick look. Okay, so this is a team that Olivia used in her BDSP latest live. Uh, so let's have a look. I guess go through it. I think it's 120 for the Hippo Boys. Um, this is a Hippowdon team, but we'll just go through one game and just see how does Sizzle really impact it. So what we want to do, for example, when we look at the initial team preview, is how does we make this Sizzle shine? So we have Blissey, for example, Gliscor, Rotom Wash, Heatran, Tangrowth, and Dragonite. Now, for immediately to me, to be careful, Blissey could pack Flamethrower, Magma Storm on Heatran, Fire Punch on the Dragonite. So these are going to be the three main um, opponents to our Sizzle. Also as well, Rotom Wash can have that um, fight Will-O-Wisp to burn Scizor. And also as well, Gliscor is an absolute menace. So I think I want to predict the uh, Heatran lead. I'm going to just lead with my Infernape. Infernape as well, as we said, is a very, very nice uh, lead. So we're going to click U-turn here. Um, if we are faster, um, we're going to like predict like a Hydro Pump. We're probably going to Laddy here. Laddy's going to be our best answer to this. And then from there as well, we can start clicking Draco and go from there. Okay, so we're going to go into this. Bolt Switch gains momentum. So this is what I mean. Like, I hope that he goes into Heatran here. If he goes into Blissey, we're going to predict like Thunder Wave. Uh, Blissey's normally run like Thunder Wave, Ice Beam, Seismic Toss, Stealth Rock, or like Soft World. <laughs> or they, yeah, so Thunder Wave is normally the. Okay, so we go Blissey. We're going to go into Hippowdon here. And Hippo's very, very nice here because we can predict Tangrowth and we'll also get Sandstorm Chimp. Chip. So we're going to predict the uh, Tangerus to come out here, so we're going to go straight into Sizzle. Um, because, you know, if we Ice Fang, for example, it's a nice chip on Tangerus, but as well we're just going to start, you know, racking up some passive chip damage with our um, Hippowdon here. So Hippowdon's main role is to rack up chip, but also be able to sweep. So we're looking at trying to eliminate Tangerus as quick as possible. Um, sweet, so we made that call here. Now we're going to U-turn. You know, Tangerus can't go for HP Heart Fire. Its main offensive move is going to be Sleep Powder. Um, so we're going to predict a, you know, a U-turn here, hopefully come in on a Heatran. And then we're just going to, you know, Heatran comes in. So we predicted this, and <laughs> now we're going to go into our Infernape. I want to click U-turn again. I just want to keep this momentum going. So you can see here we're turn 5, and there's no real damage being done, but it's just lots of little chip damage. My opponent as well could have Wish on Blissby, but it's very uncommon, so we know that... Um, Gliscor comes in, sweet, now we can come into the Kalista, get up a Spike, uh, because he won't want to stay in, and Spikes are very, very nice against his team, mainly for the Tangrowth and the Heatran, and the Blissey, um, he does elect to stay in, it's very foolish, um, we also have Rapid Spin in case he wants to rock, you know, Gliscor or Blissey are most likely going to be the rocker on this team, but we just want to keep, you know, pressuring, you know, this is all about pressure, it's how Scizor is, you know, keeping offensive momentum, so, you know, we're only on turn 6, now we see Heatran come in um, again, so now we're going to go back into Hippowdon. We're going to predict that Magma Storm, and if he does go for that Magma Storm, we can go for another Earthquake. <laughs> you know, Tangrowth is coming in. 
taking you know 12 percent plus six for rocks and then earthquake as well flash cannon we're just gonna click earthquake this turn there's no real skin off my teeth um you know that tango is kind of not like appreciate this if he goes to gliscor we can ice fang next turn so it's all about trying to okay sweet we got an ice fang here um we should be a little bit cautious of the fling toxic orb it's very rare i didn't like don't like it on this sort of team just goes for a defog here i think he's going to go into rotom wash uh so i'm just going to go to lardy here predicting rotom wash to want to come in um you know rotom wash is at 71 will be at 65 and then we can just go for a draco here and, you know by not having a sizzle <laughs> and we have a heat train that wants to put itself on a timer uh you turn on glisco very interesting uh, now we'll see what like his check is. It'll be Dragonite, and if it does go into Dragonite, we'll just go back into Cloyster. Um, but you know we're slowly seeing how we're whittling this team down. Um, if it's Blissey, that's fine. Blissey will enable us to go back into our Scizor here because we'll just U-turn. Uh, he'll try to probably get up his rocks, and that's fine by me. We just want to click U-turn. Yeah, perfect. So we're slowly seeing how we can get this prediction right. This is you know counts not as high as it should be something like 1350 at the moment maybe low 400s 1400s uh, this account before okay so we see heat train come in again we want to go into infernape uh, yeah we want to go into infernape here i think we just want to click close combat uh because nothing really wants to come in and take it if it goes to gliscor we predict that sort of u-turn um and that's what we're looking at how do we keep the number of hits going down? We just want to slowly, you know, beat this BDSP tier can be a bit stally when you use Scizor, um, but also just the hit power on nature of the team. Uh, so next time I will try to make sure it's a bit more hyper offensive, but you're sort of seeing how this team functions. Okay, so we see the Gliscor come in. Okay, so we're just going to get a cloister here. If you U turn, so be it. I think he'll try to roost here. U turns, interesting disagree with that play to be honest because uh, if he goes back into heat train we just go back out into hit power on and throw it and wash i think he's gonna hydro here so i think i'm just gonna go into clefable i might try to get my own rocks here um but yeah he's definitely gonna try to hydro i think that right, crits me nice that's what we love to see and this is probably scarf as well so the scarf means that he'll probably be able to like half clean up my team because he crit my clefable as it comes in um we're hoping for a miss here if he misses we can uh <laughs> go back on our way uh, but that's really annoying uh we, we're not seeing why this team works we're seeing more like as okay perfect you go in a cloister here. If he thunder waves, he thunder waves. We just want to get for spot. We just want to go for a rapid spin. Get rid of these annoying. Actually, no. I'm probably just go for a spike. I think spikes annoy him more than they annoy us. Um, and as well, once we go in a cloister, he train sort of gets baited in. So we'll see what happens. You know, <laughs> that crit was so annoying. Perfect. So we just want to go for a spike here. Um, there's no real point, in my opinion. Just want to spike because if he goes into heat train, we're just going to go into the hip out on and slack off. Um, but yeah, it's annoying, but it is what it is. <laughs> Straight into hippo here. We'll play the deficit. It's very, very stall in this game, so I do apologize for that. Um, when you see Blissey Tangrowth. Okay, yeah, we're going to slack. We're going to. Uh, yeah, we're going to slack off this turn. If he wants to go into Gliscor, it's going to be a, a price for him. If he goes into Rotom Wash, then we can... Yeah. So now it's up to him if he wants to defog or not. Now, if he wants to defog, uh, he will get, be getting Ice Fang straight to the face. <laughs> and then as well, it will allow Laddie to come back in on that Rotom Wash. So we do see that U-turn come off. Rotom Wash comes in. We're now going to go into Ladi. We can play this game all he wants because we know this Blissey does not have Ice Beam. So we'll see a Hydro Pump here, most likely. We can go for a Roost. 
If he goes into Hippowdon, I don't know into Heatran, yeah, that's damage. I'm gonna roost here as well. I'm pretty sure this is specs on the Rotom Wash based off that damage. Because I am like a defensive Lottie, like a Spadef Lottie. Well, not Spadef, but like I. Yeah, it's specs there. Now we're just gonna click our Psychic move. Um, so we're going to see what happens here. If he goes into Blissey, he goes into Blissey, but I'll probably just go into Cloyster. Yep, I'll go into Cloyster here, and I'll get an Icicle Spear off. Let's see what happens. Ooh, Seismic Toss. Unlucky, unlucky, unlucky. Alright, we're going to click Overheat this turn. We want to see Gliscor come in. If Gliscor comes in, we know our Hazards is up for the game. Um, so yeah, we, we're going to try to bait this in. It's annoying to lose Gliscor as well, because that's one of our main Dragonite checks. Uh, but it is what it is. He'll never go into... Oh, come on. <laughs> My opponent got so lucky. You know, it is what it is. It's annoying... And we might see a defog here because I can't get hazards back up. U turns again. Probably back into Rotom Wash. Um, but we now know that we're faster than that Rotom Wash, which is good because we can start like planning turn after turn after turn. So Dragonite comes in. I'm gonna curse here. I'm gonna get curse on the slack off up. Um, but yeah, I don't know why he made this play. Very weird play, just to <sighs> who knows? I doubt it'll be like Maybe it's just trying to bait, like, the Ice Fang for the Rotom. Ah, oh, never mind. Outreach is, like, 80 70%. That's nice. I wish I ain't got luck with my game. Can't have it all, can we? Uh, so, yeah. So, like, this is a really good example of... So, we're going to roost this turn. Um, provided he doesn't crit. <laughs> ah, nice. He did crit. Lovely. Uh, we have really had nothing go our way this game, <laughs> which is great. In a Draco here, should see Blissey come in. Yeah. He has to like recover. What are you saying? No Hablo Espanol, my friend. What do you say? Oh, whoops. Don't want to see if it would. No, I use Microsoft Edge. I think he's going to seismic toss here. Do not make me waste my time. My time is cocaine. Interesting. Um, he says that, but like he's got unlucky about every single turn he's needed to in this game, which is kind of interesting. It didn't really give you the best sizzle show off because every turn that could go possibly wrong, like if I overheated the Gliscor, like we could be clicking CC here. Um, if we didn't get crit, nice. Now we go back into Lottie. Just psychic this turn, get rid of the Rotom Wash. Let's see what happens. All right, nice. Um, if this is Scarf, we lose the game on the spot. Yeah, it's extreme speed. It's not even scarf. Need to slack off here. Uh, but yeah, this guy like absolutely got <laughs> every piece of luck that he needed. Um, I can't be bothered to edit it. Yeah. Which luck did you need to waste my time?
This dude just doesn't understand Pokemon. My time is cocaine. But yeah, like, um, you know, it's a bit of a proof of concept. You know, like, the amount of outrages and things that he needed. <laughs> this dude. Alright, guys. <laughs> Thank you all for watching, and until next time, peace.